Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. All right guys, so let's go over some vignetting corrections as well as a little bit of artistic vignetting. Okay, so I have this file selected. It's exercise file 1-13. I'm going to hit D. And this is an image that we shot of our client and friend, James, who is an amazing chef, and that's why he's holding a giant butcher knife, not because he wants to kill anybody. At least I don't think he does. I'm going to hit Control-6 to open up our lens correction panel, Command-6 on a Mac. And we're going to do something first, which is just correct the lens vignetting. We have kind of this natural vignetting that's occurring. And part of this is because just the way that this image was shot, it, the light was just falling off towards the edges. And part of it's created from the actual lens itself. So let's fix that. We're going to actually drag the amount to the opposite side. And then we're going to pull the midpoint in. And the midpoint is just going to basically kind of bring in that effect so it's a, it's a more subtle transition from the edge. And the goal of what I'm trying to do is basically match the midtone from the center uh, all the way out to the edge. And so we can keep going actually a little bit. Let's, let's go to about right there. And it looks pretty good from here. <clears throat> what I might do with this image is actually use a graduated filter in like our advanced corrections to reduce this edge vignetting right here, this little edge darkening. But we have basically corrected the vignette with just that adjustment. Now if we want to add artistic vignetting to this image, we can. But Again, I'm going to mention this a ton throughout the, this tutorial because it's something that I don't like and I wanted to stop, but I, I doubt that this will affect anything. But uh, what we see on the internet a lot is, is this. And this is just this just going overboard with vignetting. Now, for some reason, people are kind of the mindset that an image doesn't look professional unless it's vignetted, and that's just not true. Over vignetting your images is going to really kind of put a, a, a timestamp on them and say, oh, yeah, that image was done in... 1990 or you know when all the white vignettes were being done or you know 2010 when everybody was vignetting their images with black vignettes and so like that we want to keep it I want to keep it clean and that's kind of our ultimate goal is we want our images to look very very clean and sharp and and just be something that when we look back 20 years on we still look back and say that that's an amazing image and there's nothing that we would look at and say that effect is something that they did back then and that's not cool anymore why would I ever do that okay so we're going to reverse that vignette and leave it right there um, I'm going to save this as a snapshot. So we're going to save this as corrected vignette. And we'll check out the before and after. So here's the before, here's the after with the edge to edge correction. We still have to correct this side, but when we actually post produce it, we'll do it when we get to that point. So we'll leave that where it is for now. Now let's talk about creative vignetting or what we call artistic vignetting. Now artistic vignetting works in certain situations and it's typically when you have lots of really nice colors on edges, there's no like highlight colors, and you're just kind of using it to pull in interest into the image. Now there's a few images in this tutorial that would look really w good with a, a artistic vignette. So let's scroll down to them and look at them. One of those images is this cake image right here, which is exercise file 1-19. Notice that on the edges, it's already kind of dark and it has a lot of colors already in the scene. And there's no highlights that are gonna be basically kind of washed over with a gray effect. That's what's kind of the most distracting with these vignettes is overblown highlights, it becomes gray. So let's jump into the develop module. And I'm just gonna show you this. We don't need to save this setting because we're not gonna necessarily keep it. But check this out. This is an image that would actually work with uh, a vignette applied to it. It looks really nice. It looks like just the, the kind of the image is just darkening on the edges naturally versus doing you know something in post-production. And that's when artistic vignetting works the best, is when we can make it look like this is a natural occurrence versus something that is done in post-production. So I'm going to undo that. We also have another way that we can apply that same kind of look to it, and it, we can actually get it to be more powerful with the actual post-crop vignetting. And so what we want to do with post-crop vignetting is since we don't have highlights that we're worried about, we're going to switch this to color priority, and we're going to drag the amount in, and then the midpoint in, and we can just kind of adjust to how we want and we can change the roundness of this. So if we want it to be like kind of more round, we're gonna pull it off to the right. If we want it to be more square, we pull it off to the left. So this is another situation where this vignette would work pretty well. So let's actually undo that. I don't wanna save any of these settings. I'm just gonna hit Control Z a few times. Uh, we'll get back to how it was before. I wanna show you guys one other image that this would work well with, which is this image. It's exercise file 2-4. Now, once again, we see darkened edges on the side, and we know, well, I know right away by looking at this, that using a vignette would kind of pull the focus in, and it's gonna have a nice natural darkening effect on these edges. So if I open up my effects panel, and we're gonna use the actual, just standard post-crop vignetting effect, we're gonna go to color priority, and then once again, we'll drag in. 
Um, I, I don't want it to affect his like kind of his hair and his face at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the midpoint in a tiny bit, but then adjust the roundness so it's more square. And that pulls it off of his face, basically. So we're going to pull off his face a little bit and just leave it as kind of an edge vignette. I can even add on top of that another vignetting using the standard vignetting, uh, kind of the lens correction vignetting, and just make it a little bit more potent. Just kind of add a little strength to it. I like that word, potent. What I want to be careful of is, is making sure I don't drag it over his skin. If I pull this midpoint in too much, it darkens up his skin. So I don't want to do that. So what we do is add it to a certain point, and then what we have is just kind of a nice, subtle darkening effect on these edges, and it doesn't necessarily look like it's, it's done in post-production. So if I hit before on that, we can see the before and the after, and it does a really nice job of bringing in the attention into his face. Now obviously we would want to do this effect after we've actually processed the image, not at this point. So we're not going to save this out right now. I'm going to hit reset. I just want you guys to kind of understand when we would do a lens correction vignette and when we would do our artistic vignette. And either way, we always want our vignettes to look very subtle and look like natural occurrences, not like actual, you know, editing vignettes. All right, guys, so let's go on to the next tutorial after you guys have reset this image by clicking the button or hitting Control Shift R or Command Shift R on a Mac.